again. Um, so, uh, so in the previous part of this video, we uh, we introduced the idea of how to use comp how to represent complex numbers and variables or, or variables uh, on a two-dimensional plane, uh, which we call the complex plane. Um, and then we talked about the idea of what is the modulus and the argument of a complex number when we represent it on the complex plane. Um, um, so, so now let's see uh, how we can think of uh, complex uh, uh, the addition of two complex numbers geometrically. And again, uh, this is uh, an idea that uh, uh, that that really um, uh, comes about when we think about uh, comes about naturally when we think about complex numbers as sort of vectors on the two-dimensional complex plane. Uh, but, I, uh, but, uh, um, but, but let me just stress here a little bit that thinking of complex numbers as being composed of two real numbers and hence as a two-dimensional vector on the, on the, uh, on the complex plane um, is, uh, sort of, is, is a very good way of thinking about complex numbers. However, uh, complex numbers in and by itself are actually somewhat richer than just being thought of as a pair of two real numbers or just being thought of as a two-dimensional vector. And this will become more evident when we talk about, talk about complex multiplication. Um, but for now, uh, complex, uh, the, the addition of two complex numbers and the addition of two uh, two-dimensional vectors are, are, are sort of, um, um, the, their definitions actually coincide. Uh, and, and, and in this video, let's just see how that comes about. So, uh, so if you recall, let's just recall what happens when we talk about addition of two uh, two-dimensional vectors. So let's say we have a vector r1 of the form, um, say, uh, x1 unit along the x-axis and y1 units along the y-axis. So again, e x hat and e y hat are unit vectors along the x and y uh, direction. And then we have another vector, r2, which is x2 units along the x-axis and y2 unit uh, along the y-axis. Um, and the way to add these vectors algebraically is we have r1 plus r2, uh, and we just add the, uh, the, 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 the magnitude of the vectors along the x and y direction independently because e x and e y are two sort of independent, uh, they, they constitute a, a linearly independent basis for two dimensional vectors. So we add them uh, to get a new vector which is of the form y1 plus y2 along the y axis. Right. So if you think of this in terms of the Cartesian plane, then uh, we have the x-axis and we have the y-axis and we have a vector, let's say r1 here um, and we have a vector r2 um, and the way to add them is to, we can move this uh, vector r2, uh, we can move this arrow so, so that its tail coincides with uh, the, the head of the vector r1. So we have this vector r2 here and then the resultant vector which is this one is what we call uh, the new vector r which is the sum. So r is r1 plus r2. And this is called the parallel grand law for vector addition. So uh, essentially uh, what this means is this, if this is x1 units for the, uh, for the vector r1 and then this is uh, x2 units, uh, sorry, this is, uh, this is x2 units from here. Then this entire sum is, is um, x plus iy where x is x1 plus x2 and y is y1 plus y2. So uh, this is x2, this is x1, so their sum gets added to get give you an x. And similarly, uh, along the vertical direction, uh, we have this as y1, and then this length is uh, y2, and they get added to give us y1 plus y2. So this is the parallelogram law for vector addition. Um, now let's think of uh, the definition that we used for addition of two complex numbers. Um, so the way we define it is that, let's say we have a complex number z1, and let's use the symbols again, x1 uh, for this, x and y instead of a and b that we've been using so far. And then we have another complex number z2, which is x2 plus i times y2. Uh, then the way we define the sum z, which is z1 plus z2, is to add the real parts plus i times the imaginary part, which is y1 plus y2. And then if we, if we sort of label these points on the uh, uh, complex plane, uh, we have the real axis. And even in the complex sort of diagram, sometimes uh, because of the use of the symbols x and y, uh, sometimes we find that people use x and y labels even for the complex plane, but uh, it's, it's, it's good to sort of um, 
uh, keep in mind that we're sort of since since we since the since the units that we label on along the imaginary axis are in units of i, it's just good, good to keep in mind that we're working with the complex plane now. Um, so again, uh, so we'll have let's say a vector z1 here, uh, or a complex number represented by the vector z1, and then another complex number represented by the vector z2. Uh, then with this definition, um, we notice that what we're doing is we're adding uh, the real parts and the imaginary parts uh, separately. And so the resultant vector, again, uh, this vector is again uh, following the same uh, uh, rule for parallelogram law for vector addition because the resultant vector is nothing but x1 plus x2 plus i times y1 plus y2. And so, uh, so if this is x1 and we need to add x2 to it, so we can move, we can take this arrow and add it here. And so this will add x2 units to it. And if this is y1 and this is y2, uh, this is y2, then uh, y1 plus y2 will give the, the y component of the, uh, the resultant vector. And so we again arrive at uh, the parallelogram for vector addition, uh, which uh, for in, in this case for complex numbers. Uh, so just, just to sort of uh, recap this, the way we define addition for two complex numbers is is, is actually uh, nothing but if you think of this in geometrically is nothing but the parallelogram law for vector additions where we are representing the complex numbers z1 and z2 as vectors in the two dimensional complex plane and in fact this also uh, brings out a very interesting idea that uh, when we think of vectors uh, let's say they, we define a vector r1 uh, which was of the form x in the x direction and y1 units in the y direction and, and we said that E x hat and E y hat are actually constitute a, a linearly independent two dimensional basis uh, for representing two dimensional vectors. Um, in the same way here, we can actually think of uh, one and i as constituting a linearly independent two dimensional basis for the set of complex numbers over real numbers. So for instance, if you're given these two bases, one and i, um, we can compose all the complex numbers z by uh, by sort of multiplying one uh, by multiplying uh, by, by multiplying x to the unit one and multiplying y to the unit i um, so so essentially we can think of complex numbers as constituting a two-dimensional basis over the set of real numbers so we have two real numbers x and y and we can think of one and i as two linearly independent bases where one is the basis along the real axis and i is the basis along the imaginary axis um, and, and in that case, uh, we notice that again, what we're doing is we are adding uh, x1 and x2. Uh, we are adding when we are adding two complex numbers, we are adding uh, the the sort of x1 and x2 along along the basis one, and y1 and y2 along the uh, orthogonal basis i. Uh, and again, this is exactly uh, parallel to how we add two two dimensional vectors. Um, so, uh, so addition of, of complex numbers is exactly the same as addition of two two-dimensional vectors. Uh, but again, uh, uh, just uh, just to uh, just to make the point again that 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 uh, that I started off uh, making at the beginning of this video, which is. Um, if, if you think about uh, addition, it seems that we all we have to do is think about complex numbers as just two-dimensional vectors. However, that will miss out a few things because now if you think about multiplication, um, there is no natural rule for multiplying two or taking the product of two vectors. Um, so we can think of a scalar product, we can think of a vector product. Um, so a scalar product of two, let's just restrict our, restriction to, uh, our discussion to two-dimensional vectors. So a scalar product of two two-dimensional vectors will give you, you your input is two vectors and your and what it gives you is one scalar. Uh, similarly, if you define the vector product of two two-dimensional vectors, in the end uh, you get a number which will point, uh, let's say, perpendicular to the plane that you that you have your vectors on. Um, however, complex numbers as an object. Uh, as 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 a as a as a, as a uh, object composed of these two parts is a number in and by itself, and that makes the description of complex numbers somewhat richer than just thinking of them as a two-dimensional vector. Uh, and this will become more evident uh, in the next part of the video when we talk about multiplication of complex numbers and see what that means. Um, so hope to see you there. Thanks.